If David Byrne really thought the world was a dangerous place for women, he'd be aghast at the thought of our next band, Girls' School, who found themselves in among this lot. Heavy metal was the last male domain in music, but one band piqued the interest of Lemmy and joined the hard-gigging, hard-drinking, access-all-areas world of the Monsters of Rock. Why do you think you were drawn to metal? What was it about metal? Well, I grew up listening to it, you know. The first couple of concerts I went to, I was Odium with my mate at, from school when we were 16, I think, something like that. Black Sabbath, saw Black Sabbath then there, and then um, Deep Purple on the Burn tour. Little did I know that later on in the years, we'd actually be playing with them. When you first played rock clubs that had probably only ever seen male bands in yeah. them before, did you ever feel that you had to win the audience over? I think in the beginning, people didn't really know what to make of us. So, you know, they just, I think, first of all, just looked at us as if to go, say, what the hell is going on here? You know? Did you get any heckles? Oh, God, yeah. It always used to be, get your tits out, basically, you know. <laughs> I used to say, get yours out first. After learning their trade playing sweaty rock clubs, girls' school received the ultimate metal seal of approval. As this little band called Modes Ahead happened to be looking for a support band. And um, Lemmy heard the single, and he came down to a rehearsal to see if we could actually play. And um, of course, then we, they invited us on their first major British tour. We'd never been you know, on a tour like it, so we didn't really know what to expect. And we actually shared a bus with Motorhead as well on the first tour. So of course, we hardly even knew them. And first of all, when we saw pictures of them before we actually met them, we were going, what the hell? You know, actually petrified. On tour with Motorhead, were you under pressure to party as hard as them because you were, you know, had to yeah. keep we, your we end up? We didn't find any pressure whatsoever. <laughs> there was no mentions of cups of tea or anything like that. I mean, basically, they used to bring us in crates of special brew. So tell me about um, Please Don't Touch. Vic Mail, our producer, basically, and then started to work with Motorhead as well. And he, he, he's the one that came up with the idea. He said, why don't you two get together to do Please Don't Touch? Please don't touch, I say so much. Please don't touch, I say so much. It went straight into number five. It's like we've still got the silver, silver record. I mean, it sold quarter of a million, and it only went to number five. That was a really exciting time. I mean, the first time we went on top of the box, of course, it was massive. Were you seen as dangerous girls? One American tour, the, the, um, on the back of the T-shirts, it said the Lock Up Your Sons tour, which <laughs> we thought was absolutely brilliant. So, All yeah. these innocent young boys coming to yeah, see yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Changed forever. Yeah, well, I hope so. 